But first, let me bring in Lord Alan Sugar for reaction today on what the government needs to do and what Boris Johnson needs to do to get the economy moving again. And Lord Sugar, I'm fascinated for your verdict on this because obviously you are a very experienced businessman, but Johnson today, Boris, making quite clear he doesn't want to move too fast. Do you worry that that is a mistake? Well, uh, I'm, I'm afraid we're stuck between a rock and a hard place, really. Um, the economy is going down the pan, uh, which everybody knows and accepts, and the same thing in America. The problem is, what do you put first? Do you take a view, take a gamble and say, well, look, come on, we've got to get things moving again and, you know, uh, possibly uh, endanger the lives of people? Or do you say, absolutely not, uh, not until we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, um, but uh, it, it, is, it is safe for people to go back to work? Um, and, that's the dis and that's the dilemma. It's picking that moment and someone making that decision. Now, here in America, um, the, uh, the, 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 governor, the governor of Georgia uh, has made an unprecedented move. He's opened up the state, um, mm. and people are on the beaches, they're having their hair done, they're having their nails done, and all that stuff. And I guess um, uh, whilst it is um, not... A, a good thing to do. It might be interesting to see what happens. Even Donald Trump um, was angry with that, wasn't he? Well, I don't think Donald Trump knows what he's doing, to be quite honest with you. I mean, he's caused enough trouble in this last week. Uh, I mean, he's just an absolute joke. There's no question of it. California relaxed their beaches the other day, right? And instead of people acting sensibly and keeping themselves, you know, six feet or ten feet apart, no. They went like lunatics. And then I suppose the governor of Florida has taken a look at that and said, sorry, we're, we're not opening our beaches yet or our golf courses or our tennis courts or, or our shops or our restaurants. Um, I really don't know. I, I, I have no magical answer to what to do, but the economy is going down the pan. The only thing I can say is, is that America's printing money, England is printing money, France is printing money, Spain is printing money, and Italy is printing money. So basically the parity of all the currencies will most probably remain the same. Um, it's just that ra there'll be rampant inflation everywhere because if you just keep printing mm. money, uh, the value of it becomes um, you know, lower and lower. <clears throat> Overall, though, it feels like you are broadly supportive of what the government here in the UK has done, this sort of balance approach. Yeah, I am. Um, because what would you do in that situation? I, um, I think I, I was very impressed with the Chancellor who recognised immediately the, the financial impact it will have on workers if they were told they can't come to work and locked at home. And this furlough thing, um, you know, I, I know it might have taken a few weeks to get, get going, but, I mean, at least they did something about it, right? Um, and the other thing is, is that, you know, um, the government got caught short, or not the government, but the NHS got caught short of ventilators, of protective clothing, of masks and supplies. Now, it's quite obvious why that happened. And, and I use an example, a stupid example, mm. of toilet paper, where all of a sudden everybody bought toilet paper like it was going out of fashion. And, of course, you couldn't get it. So there was a rush in the demand, an unprecedented demand, that meant and everybody was out of stock. Similarly, uh, manufacturers who make these protective clothing and masks, you know, before this uh, virus came along, they were making a certain quantity per month. But now there's a demand for maybe 10 times or 20 times the amount. And to ramp up production takes time. And for people who are keep accusing the government of, of not getting the supplies. I mean, they need shooting. They really do because, you know, they're, they're upsetting members of the public saying that the government has done something wrong there. I'm a man that's been uh, producing products for years mm. and I know better than anyone else that you cannot just suddenly increase your production 10 times.
Um, and neither can, um, for example, a plumbing company suddenly start making uh, uh, masks, if you understand what I mean, yeah? Yep. It has to be made by the people that are, that are expert in making them. Now, one of those people leading the accusations against the government is your former close friend, Piers Morgan, who has been a real critic. You have become a real critic of him and his approach to this pandemic. He has, in turn unfollowed and blocked you on Twitter. What's going on between you two, Lord Sugar? Well, I, I, what's going on is, is that I'm sick and tired of his tactics that he's using um, to just dig himself up, uh, to make him, to give himself a name, to become a martyr, to become the new Florence Nightingale of Britain. I mean, it, it's so transparent uh, that, that it is, it's untrue. And is keeps hacking away at the government, and I wouldn't mind. They don't take a blind bit of notice of him. No one takes a blind bit of notice of him, other than gullible members of the public who who go along and say, "Yeah, yeah, you're right, Piers. Yeah, yeah, you're right." And all he's interested in is boosting his Twitter followers. That's it. Nothing else. Uh, and he's insincere because basically, if you used your common sense and you were sympathetic towards what's going on, uh, you would not keep bashing the government all of the time. Um, you know, let's put it this way, Dan. The government is not deliberately not buying stuff, right? It can't get it. It's as simple as that. Um, the government is not deliberately not testing people because they can't ramp up the testing places and locations. This is an unprecedented matter. Um, that uh, a, a sensible person would sympathise with. I don't think the government has done anything bad at all, to be honest with you. I think mm. they've done the best they can. Piers obviously has said he's now done with you and he's also described you as a selfish, stupid, privileged billionaire hiding safely in his luxury Florida home. Your response? Well, I mean, first of all, we're not safe here. It's a lockdown, complete lockdown situation. People are dying here at the same rate of knots, if not more, than they are in the UK. We are under very strict regulations by Palm Beach County. Uh, basically, we can't do anything, which is, uh, I think, a similar situation as we have yeah. in the UK. So that's, that's complete nut and nonsense. Um, and, I, I, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's a typical um, uh, scum Ex scum journalist comment to try and wind people up against me, picturing uh, a, a, a picture of me sitting then my feet up in luxury uh, in Florida. It's a total load of rubbish. I mean, we are we're stuck in our home. Uh, we're over seventy, both my wife and I. Um, we we have people come and deliver food to us, which is quite good. And we're basically stuck. It's as simple as that. Yeah, you have and to be careful. Palm Beach, well, of course. And, and, and until Palm Beach County start to ease up on certain things, we are stuck. And we have been stuck for four or five weeks. Now, I know it doesn't really matter at the moment, but there is a lot of disappointment uh, during this pandemic about the loss of some great entertainment. And you know, Lord Sugar, I, I love The Apprentice. I've watched it from the start. And we get the devastating news, no new series this year because of the uh, coronavirus. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, it's terrible. And I was so, in fact, today, uh, in fact, the original schedule was that we would start filming uh, on, uh, well, today. It was actually today we were originally going to start filming. Uh, we have the candidates lined up. Um, we've obviously had to, had to put them on the back burner. Hello, are you still there? Yeah, can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, we've had to put them on the back burner at the moment and put them, tell them to hold on for a while. If you can imagine... Um, uh, the Apprentice is great because we go travelling overseas, yeah, yeah. we get on planes, uh, we go and visit places. Well, it's blatantly obvious you can't do that. Um, and also, The Apprentice is all about cooperating with factories and kitchens and retailers and having an audience when we're pitching stuff to people. So obviously that's not possible either. So regretfully, we've had to cancel it. Uh, can, uh, no, sorry, not cancel it, delay it. So, so maybe two next year. That would be good. 
Well, well, what, what we've got two. We've got two plans. Um, one plan is that, dependent on how the Corona thing is working, we've penciled in a, a kind of a filming start date around September time, um, which may result in a um, a series coming out in spring of uh, of next year. Um, and if that is not possible, then we have to really cancel the whole thing for one year and start again. It's unfortunate. But, yeah. um, but uh, it I is unprecedented we'll try... times. Yeah. What we're going to do, though, I think what, what, we're, what the production company is asking the BBC to consider is a programme to transmit this October, which will be a compilation of some of the past year's uh, Apprentice episodes, right? Uh, some of the famous ones uh, and famous boardroom scenes, which might be of interest. To That's a good idea. Yeah. No, I love it. I need my fix. Lord, Al Lord Alan Sugar from Florida, thank you so much for joining us.